Okay, it starts like this. I was 3D printing this ball, and it is a replacement part for an arm thing that I built to hold a tablet like this. So tablets are pretty small, right? What if you want to hold something bigger? Well, I jumped into Fusion 360 and designed this thing. This is a jig, which I then built, and here we go. We're ready to cut a ball. Hey Rosie, try to be in the video. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my sphere cutting jig. Got my little router mounted to it with a ball end, just taking the finishing pass. So far, I've been cutting with just a square bit, this one here. Uh, but switching to the ball end, you can see we're getting a really nice surface finish. A little close up of the mechanism that I've made. It's uh, it's a bit of a cludge. You can see I've had to 3D print this piece because um, I forgot to drill. I forgot to allow for a mounting point for the little gear that was convenient to reach. Um, the purpose of the gear is, well, it just it gives you a slight mechanical advantage. I think every 180 degrees is a third of the way around uh, and that just makes it so that you can pass over those lumps and bumps without you know juddering although I'm not sure how much it's helping because there's, there's a bit of backlash in there you can you can kinda see if I hold that still this is actually mounted a little bit off center so the pivot point is directly underneath the center of the sphere obviously uh, but the router uh, arbor is sort of mounted 40 millimeters over to one side and the reason for that is that it gives you slightly better reach into here so you can make this diameter smaller I think I could go smaller still uh, if I had removed some of this uh, stock on the bandsaw before I started but as it is that's plenty small enough for my purposes for this sphere um, I'm happy with that diameter <laughs> The one issue with having 3D printed this mount is that it's PLA and this gets pretty toasty. Um, like that's, I judge that to be about 40, 50 degrees, um, which is, you know, below the point where it's going to cause problems, but it's, it's pretty sketchy. I can't operate this for really long periods. But it's holding up very well. Um, it's showing no signs of going glassy, so we've not melted it. It's good. To finish this up, I have purchased one of these. I've bought into their silly little system. Look how silly this is. I mean, it's got it's got a metal thread there, but then they go and put this plastic thread here, so you have to buy the bit that goes in between. Great. Thanks, guys. I guess, you know, there's some advantages. This this has got like a rubbery feel to it, so you can you can mash it up against there a little, which is pretty much what I intend to do. So let's give this a go. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to sand this nicely with the 40 millimeter offset or whether I'll have to offset it more or less. Let's find out together. The first attempt ended in disaster. I gouged it out because I left it in one spot too long. Turns out the soft rubber's not really helpful. Oh, no. I also decided that the 40 millimeter offset wasn't working. There's our three holes. Uh, we've got one on center, one a little bit off, and the original one at 40 mil. So, I think what we'll do is we'll try the one a little bit off first. Oh my goodness, that's tight. That's tight. Very good. Now we're ready to try this again. Oh, 
that looks absolutely perfect. There we go. That looks like perfect engagement. That's what we want. Dismounted the thing from the pin and it's just loose. I've put this board here so that I can't accidentally hit the sphere. I'm limited as to how deep I can go because it's hitting the sphere here and I can't get this last bit round because it's now hitting here even though I've modified this that's as deep as we can go. Now to measure that I have these giant calipers that I've made. They are essentially just a stick of wood with some 3mm MDF and then I have here just another piece with a straightish edge and um, you can buy these metal stick-on tape measures, really nice. Now these calipers are surprisingly accurate to the nearest millimeter anyway. Right, well the target is 160 and we're at 162. So actually, this might be mostly gone by the time we get there. We'll see. I, I think I am going to start sanding now rather than trying to cut away until this is gone because I'll just be chasing my tail. I mean, this is full of cracks and holes anyway because I did a very much rushed job of the glue up. I don't have a thicknesser, so I was able to make the sides of these planks parallel but uh, I didn't try to, you know, make the top and the bottom face parallel. For a finishing pass, because uh, it's already very smooth, I'm going to have a go at lapping it with this. So I've just got a strip of sandpaper and clodged it into here. Hopefully, as I sand against that, it'll kind of smush out into the shape of the sphere itself, therefore creating a lap. So let's give this a go. Feels kind of promising. I think I'm going to put some tape on the inside. Come on. There we go. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. So we've got a little washer on there. That's got to come off as well without losing it. So. There is my sphere. Alrighty, so the screws are out. And that is my faceplate. No particular reason why it's grooved, I just think it looks cool. Makes it look like a factory part, you know? Anyway, thank you all for watching the video and I'll um I'll see you next time.